apologize for a little bit of a late start today. <clears throat> we uh, have a lot going on today. Amen. Brother Freddie and Brother Steve are with us today from North Oklahoma, and we're so happy to have them with us. We've been enjoying quite a bit of good fellowship. You know, there's something about being around people that love this Holy Ghost oh, as yeah. much as you do. Amen. There's an old song I used to sing. You just let me get around someone who is filled with the Holy Ghost. You just let me get around someone who, whom I love the most. Amen. Praise God. I used to, back in my revival days, brother, I used to sing this old song. You just let me get around someone who is filled with the Holy Ghost. You just let me feel the presence of the one I, I love the most. It is there that the glory of the Father will be found. We're so 
excited to have Brother Steve and Brother uh, Freddie with us today. Bless their hearts. They drove an awful long way to come down and be with us. But you know, when you love the truth of God, and you love this one God, Jesus' name, apostolic, glory to God, Acts 238 message, it's worth the drive. Amen. It's worth the drive to get around folks who love this message as much as you do. I only know that, brother, because I'm willing to drive it too. Amen. I'll drive anywhere I've got to to find people love this message. Steve will be playing his piano for us, and uh, you know, my crackly old voice, I hope he can, he did beautiful on that song. I'm going to tell you, when I used to preach revivals, I'd sing that, and boy, the pianists have a hard time, because that song has kind of a strange cadence to it. But he sure did pick up on that good. Yes, so that's a, that's a good omen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we open our service today. Father, we thank you, God, for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the presence of the Lord. We thank you for the power of God that came at Pentecost. And that comes every time people of sincere hearts and minds come together in one place in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask God today that you would lose your presence, lose your power in the name of Jesus. Let those who are participating in this service by reason of the internet, let them enjoy and benefit from the same Holy Ghost power that we feel in the house of God today. Pour out the Holy Ghost. Fill with the Holy Ghost. We find the enemy in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of confusion, every spirit of depression, every spirit of despondency, every spirit of infirmity, in the name of Jesus, we find you by the power of God. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. And we claim liberty and victory in the house of God. Now that spirit is the Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. God grant it today in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And amen. I want to do something first, brother, so we can kind of get it out of the way. And I don't want to interrupt the Spirit as the service is progressing. But today is my mother's birthday. And anybody who knows my mom knows she is a faithful, supportive, tithing member of this church, even though she lives a thousand miles away or so in Florida right now. But mom watches every service. I forgot to start our Facebook. Mom watches every service. There we go. Bless her, Jesus. Bless her, Jesus. Amen. My mother's birthday is today, and Mom watches every single service. And I want us, if we would, to just give her a birthday greeting in the name of the Lord. So let's together do as we rehearsed last night. Amen. Happy birthday to you.
down at the bottom of the pal. We've got to work till the day we die. So keep her in prayer if you would today. Amen. Amen. Ooh, I'll tell you, I feel the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Glory. Oh, I feel the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Ooh, I'm trying to, I'm yes. trying to fight the Holy Ghost for a direction. I'm like, Lord, do, should we? Should we just go on with the worship service or should we just have church a while? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to worship God today. And I want us to begin, if we would, with that old chorus that says, All day long I've been with Jesus and it's been a wonderful day. I have climbed up one step higher in that good old gospel way. I have sold all these seeds of kindness, and I've done all my heroes. But in my head, I've made it right, so I could testify to Christ. I'm 
make it right, oh yes I would. I wanna taste it right tonight. Yes, I've been with Jesus. I've been with Jesus. I've been with Jesus. One, 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 one way 
to your heart. One, one, one. One way to God and time in Jesus' name. Never. 
so glad I found it out, found it out, found it out. I'm so glad I found it out, found it out in time. I'm so glad I found it out, found it out, found it out. I'm so glad I found it out, found it out in time. I'm so glad I found it out, found it out, found it out. I'm so glad I found it out, found it out in time. I know Jesus is the Father. I know Jesus is the Son. I know Jesus is the Holy Ghost. And these three are the Lord. Well, I know Jesus is the Father. I know Jesus is the Son. I know Jesus is the Holy Ghost. And these three are the Glory to God, I love the Holy Ghost. 
Christ. Amen. I love the presence of God. I love today what I'm feeling in the household of Zion. Glory to the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us today to take advantage of Brother Steve. And uh, there's so many songs I'd love for us to be able to sing on a regular basis, but because we don't have live music, and I'm, lately we've been having to do our service a cappella, we're not able to sing a lot of these old songs. Blessing, Lord. So Blessing. we're going to try today Blessing. to sing, you know, the Waterway? Amen. Amen. I love this song. We don't get to sing this, but we're going to sing it today. Amen. Oh, long ago, the maids were Secure 
in the righteousness of God as revealed in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Oh, bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of glory. We bless you. Lord, for those watching by reason of the internet right now, let the Holy Ghost that we feel in this place touch them. Oh, my God, in the name of Jesus, touch Brother Marvin right now. Touch Brother Adam, Lord, and his partner today. Touch Amy, God, in the name of Jesus. Every individual master who's watching today, touch him by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, break every bondage. Break every chain. Set them loose and set them free in the liberty of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God we serve. What a great God we serve. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Yes, Lord. You want to try that again? <laughs> That's all right. Long ago, the maids drew
Amen. If you get a song in your spirit, then that just play what you feel. Amen. Oh, oh wait a minute. Look at me. I'm ready to move on. <laughs> and I'm forgetting. I asked Brother uh, Freddie. I told you I'm horrible. It takes me a minute to figure a name out. I asked Brother Freddie if he'd come and sing a couple of specials for us. But first, you know what? Let me ask Brother Steve if you'll come testify. Oh. <laughs> Just share a testimony with the folks. Oh, bless him, Jesus. Love it. Love it. Love it. Amen. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Glad Amen. to be here. Yes, Amen. Glad to feel God. Yes. yes. Glad I know who Jesus is. Amen. Yes. Yes. Come on. Amen. One God. Glory. Yes. 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 Jesus is his Love it. Love it. Love it. Glad I was uh, raised in this. I'm glad I was baptized in Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, 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 oh. You better believe it. You never right. know. You never know until the next day you're going to go. That's I want right. to be ready. Right. right. Hallelujah. Bless Amen. 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 I want to be ready. Hallelujah. I've Amen. seen here lately so many people passed away. And I, I just pray and hope that they were right with God. You know, and I just, that's the biggest thing I want to be. I want to be ready. If God calls me home. Right. That's right. I'm ready to make it. So yes. God bless you. Amen. 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 It's the thing about having tight quarters, you know. Here you go, that's yours. Amen. Now, brother, and I went and called brother uh, uh, Steve off the piano, but then brother Freddie's going to sing, so I guess brother Freddie's going to have to come back. So that's all right, brother Steve. Uh, brother, yeah, brother Freddie. Well, Lord have mercy. Would you come? Would you get up here real easy? If you need a sip of water, there's a cup there that you can sip from. Amen. And I'm going to have Brother Freddie. I told him to sing one or two. Just sing whatever you feel led to sing. And then we'll move on with the service from there. I hope you folks online are feeling what we're feeling. Amen. Hallelujah. Here you go, brother. Here, you can use that. Glory. Yes. I love what I feel. Yes. yes. You can be here right now and feel what we're feeling. Yes. The Lord can touch you right where you're yes. at. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The song is an address change. We're going to have a new address in heaven. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah.
out there, I told Brother Freddie and, you know, Brother Steve, I, I hate to have to even say it, but years ago there were some so-called apostolic brethren, Pentecostal brethren in the affirming movement, who decided they didn't like me too well. Because as imperfect as I was and as imperfect as I am, Oh, no. I made a commitment that if I'm going to live this thing, I'm going to live it right, I'm going to live Amen. it through. Come on. I'm not going to screw around and play games with God. You don't oh, play games with God. Jesus. And I made up my mind that if I was going to do it at all, I was going to do it right. right. And I'll tell you why. Because I love the presence of God. Yes. I love the power of God. There is nothing that thrills my soul more than seeing people come to the saving grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Yes, Jesus Lord, Christ. Yes, there is nothing in this world that thrills me more than seeing people receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There is nothing that thrills me more than seeing people delivered from demons. I've seen people's lives change in a split second. I've seen God deliver people from alcohol addiction, drug addiction, sex addiction, and it was instantaneous and permanent. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to tell you, honey, you cannot experience a genuine move of God unless you're genuine with God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If you're playing games, honey, I got news for you. The Lord will sometimes bless you because He's a good God. The Lord will sometimes touch you because He's a good God. But when you're playing games with the Lord, He cannot do everything He wants to do. That's right. He cannot be everything He wants to be. And some people say, well, preacher, you've been in Dallas alone for almost 20 years now. Look at how few people you've got. You know what? I'd rather worship with these sincere brothers and have people that love the Lord and love this message and love this gospel than worship with a thousand that don't. Amen. And you know the funny thing is, I don't feel today like I'm in a little church. I feel today like I'm in a mega church. Amen. I think the angels of God are here. Amen. I think they want to witness today what they cannot experience. Hallelujah. You see, angels don't have God in them. They don't have the Holy Ghost in them. They serve God. They were created to serve the Lord. But they don't have that relationship we have today by reason of the Holy Ghost. And I believe this place is packed today with angels. I want to see, because I'll tell you, oh, I'm so jealous of how God's touching Brother Steve. I'm so jealous of how God is touching Brother Freddie. Amen. I'm so jealous of how God is touching Brother Charles. Them angels, they're just sitting there saying, I wish I could have Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody questions? I've been saying for years. When I started my first churches many years ago, we started with no music. We started with no nothing. And I used to tell our people back then, brother, I said, you know, folks, our service is going to change. They're going to be very different than what you're seeing now, what you're experiencing now. And as time went on, we began to add musicians and we began to add folks to the service, you know. And people began to contribute their talents and their gifts. I love having folks that can sing specials because that's a blessing to me. And do you know, I don't get that. I don't get that normally. I don't have anybody who can get up here and sing a song that can bless me. So, brother, I've been preaching for decades in Dallas, Texas. Decades. Not a, not a few years. Decades. And I don't have many of the things that most folks in bigger churches take for granted. I don't have people to do a lot of the work that I have. I have to edit the videos. I have to post them online. I have to lead the worship service. I have to preach. I have to teach. I have to do it all. And I've told Tommy many times, I said, you know, you have no idea how badly I need people that can bless me. Amen. I need people who can contribute to the service that are not me. 
And I appreciate so much today, Brother uh, Freddie and Brother Steve being here. We've had a wonderful time of fellowship. I'm going to tell you, uh, there's nothing like being around folks that love this message. Amen. Nothing in the world like it. It is such a blessing. Amen. I want to move on with the message. We started our service a little bit late today, so we are running a little bit late. Uh, not, not any problem, as far as I'm concerned. And Brother uh, Marvin, I'm sure he's probably out there saying, Now, brother, you take your time. Just go on now. Amen. You have your Bibles this afternoon. I would ask you to join me in the 10th chapter of the book of Matthew. The Gospel as recorded by the Apostle Matthew. We're in chapter 10. And we're going to begin today at verse 16. I have a message that God's given me for the church. Now when I say the church, folks, I do not preach. I, I don't... You know, I don't care how others preach. They've got their calling, I've got mine. I don't preach to a local congregation. That's not the nature of my ministry. God called me, he said, when I was a child, he told me to a prophetic ministry. The messages that I preach, in my mind, have a universal application. In other words, everybody in the church everywhere needs to hear what I'm saying. Yes. I don't care whether you're Baptist, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, what you are, Pentecostal, you need to hear what I'm saying. Amen. Because Amen. God is trying to speak to the church and He's trying to set some things straight. Amen. You know, it's like a mechanic. Sometimes a mechanic will tell you, when you're driving, do this, or when you put gas in, do this, and they instruct you so that you can get the most out of your vehicle. Yeah. Well, see, prophetic ministry is God instructing yes, the Jesus. church so we can get the most out of what He wants to give us and what He wants to yes. do for us and with right. us. Today I have a message I've titled, The Boy Who Cried Wolf. And I have a subtext for that. The false narrative, listen to me, the false narrative of persecution mm -hmm. in the American church. Mm -hmm. The false narrative of persecution against the American church. The boy who cried wolf. Matthew chapter 10, beginning at verse 16 this afternoon. You'll see I have it on the screen. If you do not have a Bible in front of you, you can read it off of the screen behind my head. Yes, Jesus. And the word of the Lord today reads from the King James text, Matthew 10, 16 through 31. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, Take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Oh, but when they persecute you in this city, let's see if it tells us to take up arms and to go to civil war. Let's see if that's the instruction God gives us. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. Yes. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over 
the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is not enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Hallelujah. Do you bow your heads with me one more moment? Master, Savior, King of kings and Lord of lords, we come before you today. God, the word of God must go forth and if the church is to benefit, it must go forth in power. It must go forth with Holy Ghost authority. It must go forth in love. Oh God, human beings are but a vessel. All we can do is speak words, but it takes the anointing of the Holy Ghost to make those words come to life in the heart and in the hearing of those that hear. Lord, touch every individual in this place, every individual that is watching, that will watch by reason of the internet. Let them today, oh God, have a heart and a mind that is cultivated and made ready to receive the seed that I'm about to sow. Lord, that it might take root, that it might grow up, that it might produce fruit unto righteousness for your name's sake. And the one the preacher today, oh God, give me divine strength. Oh God, put today wings upon my tongue that I might speak with the voice of an angel, for we ask it in none other than Jesus' wonderful, precious, saving name. Amen. Praise God and amen. The Lord spoke to us in the 10th chapter of the book of Matthew about coming persecution. If there's anything that drives me out of my mind, it is the fear that dominates so much of what is supposed to be Christianity today. God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Amen. themselves every chance they get because their preacher gets in the pulpit and says you better worry about this you better worry about that you better worry honey I got news for you you better worry ought not to be in the vocabulary of any man of God any woman of God anybody who gets in the pulpit you better worry are not words we need to be preaching hallelujah you can preach you better be prepared you better make ready but don't you dare to work. Amen. My Amen. God, the Lord said, listen, 
He said that God takes care of the birds. The Lord takes care of the sparrows. The very hairs of your head are numbered. My God, what in the world do we have to worry about? Amen. What do we have to worry about? He said, don't fear. If you look at what we just read today, you see the Lord says over and over again, don't fear. Don't worry about what you're going to say. Don't worry about what you're going to do. Don't worry about them who can kill the body. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh. Hallelujah. Fear is not in the Christian vocabulary. Amen. And if it's in some who profess Christianity, it most certainly ought not to be in the Pentecostal vocabulary. Amen. My God, we Amen. got the Holy Ghost. Come on. I don't have anything to be afraid of. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Oh. First Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 19. The Word of God declares, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity, love, shall cover the multitude of sins. Got people sitting in judgment of one another, criticizing one another, finding fault with one another. When the Word of God said the only obligation we have is to love one another. When you love people, their sin becomes less obvious. Don't tell me love the sinner, hate the sin. If you love the sinner, you don't see their sin. Amen. Amen. Oh, Verse yeah. 9, 1 Peter 4, use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, or as every man is blessed, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. In other words, if you're going to talk, then let your speech be dictated and directed by God. Be an oracle of God. Like I do, what, what I hear coming out of a lot of Christians' mouth does not originate with God. Amen. Amen. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Verse 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice! Oh, when the tribulations come, when the trials come, when the persecutions come, <coughs> Peter said, don't think it's strange when these things happen. He said, but rejoice. Oh, my goodness. You see, God's people are supposed to have and reaction to things that the world don't have. Right. Amen. You see, when we fall under persecution, we get happy. When the enemy comes against us, we start shouting. When the devil tries to vex us, we get happy. I'm going to tell you, you get a church full of people who are going through trials and tribulations and troubles and struggles, and I'm going to tell you, they're going to have the best church you ever have. They're going to shout. They're going to dance. that bring out that yes. joy that bring out that happiness yes. and that yes. gladness all yes. oh, the devil yes. trying to come yes. against me like he come against Jesus yes. that's all yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I get to yes. suffer yes. like all the Lord yes. suffered yes. Glory. Glory. my Lord have mercy Hallelujah. but Glory. rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's Glory. sufferings Glory. Glory. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, listen, happy are ye. For the Spirit of God, the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, 
or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody yes. in other men's matters. Yes. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, yes. but oh, let him glorify hallelujah. God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And it first begin at us, if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. The Christian church in America has long been marketing the false narrative of persecution. If you hear a lot of television preachers, if you hear a lot of pastors, they try to tell you, oh, the church is being persecuted. We're experiencing such persecution. Oh, my God, so many things are coming against us. Bless God. Honey, if we were being persecuted like they are in some countries, you wouldn't have a pulpit to stand in and gripe about persecution. That's right. That's right. To hear American Christians tell it, the level of persecution against the church in America is nearly that experienced by the early church, the first century church, baloney. At that time, people were being imprisoned simply for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ministers and believers were being hunted down, jailed, and even killed for nothing more than their adherence to the Christian faith. While the church today peddles the notion that it is under attack in America, there are believers all over the world who are experiencing genuine persecution, which literally mirrors that of the persecution experienced by the early church. There are saints today in Afghanistan, there are saints today in the Arab world who can lose their life for converting to the Christian faith. And we've got these dingling preachers in America claiming that persecution is against the church, that we're under such persecution. Honey, do you remember the story when you were a kid, a little boy, who was out tending the sheep, and he used to love to scream, wolf, wolf. Right. And that way, you know, the, the villagers and his family and friends would all come running to help him to scare off this wolf so it right. wouldn't take one of his sheep. Come on. And that little boy, he, he made sport of that. He thought that was yeah. fun. You know, every time I scream, wolf, here they all come running. Right. <laughs> Oh, this is fun. This is fun. So he got in the habit of doing that. And every time the villagers would come, and every time his family and friends would come, they'd find him standing there with a big dumb grin on his face. Because in reality, there was no wolf. That's right. There's only one problem with that kind of behavior, and that is when the time came that a real wolf finally showed up. Mm -hmm. Come on. When a real wolf finally showed up and he cried out for help, there was no help to come. There was no help to be found because they had heard him cry wolf so many times that nobody believed him anymore. I'm going to tell you something, church. All these idiot, ignorant, stupid preachers and all these ignorant Christians running around screaming that the church is under persecution. You keep screaming that. You keep yelling that. You keep preaching that. And when it really comes, ain't nobody going to hear you because you've been talking that trash for years and years and years Amen. when it wasn't true. Preaching. Amen. Try it. I'm going to tell you, we, you got to be careful about what you preach and what you teach and what you talk, believer. Amen. I talked the other day about who can love a lie. Well, this is one of those lies that people are loving. That's right. So, oh, I love to make myself out to be some big martyr. I love to make myself out. Oh, they've taken prayer out of the school.
school, honey, they never took prayer out of school. There isn't anybody on this planet powerful enough to take prayer out of any school. Oh, you don't understand Madeline Murray O'Hare had this big atheist movement and she was able to remove prayer from school. She did not remove prayer from the school. She did not remove prayer from the school. I got news for you, honey. I prayed in school whenever I wanted to pray in school. Right. You want to stop me? Go ahead and try Hello. to stop me. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean to tell you, ain't nobody, nobody come over and, and tap my knuckles with a ruler because I was praying. Amen. Nobody right. come over and hit me on the head or sent me to the office to be paddled because I was praying. Oh, yeah. I went to the principal of the high school I was attending, the public high school. I said, uh, Mr. Leonard, we'd like to start a morning prayer meeting before school so some of us students can get together and pray together before class. He said, all right, fine. He said, I'll let you use the main office uh, conference room. We were right next door to his office. And, and our high school was a big high school. We had a uh, principal over each of the four grades. Uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. There was a principal over each of the four grades. And the senior principal was also the overall principal, you know, the senior uh, of the entire school. Yeah. And this was Mr. Leonard. Well, I got several of us Pentecostal kids from my church I grew up in to uh, come and gather with us every morning before class in the main office uh, conference room. And I got news for you about us Pentecostal people. We're not the quietest prayers. <laughs> And we don't believe that God's nervous. We don't believe that God has to take an Ativan every time no. somebody raises their voice above this level. That's right. We don't pray, I hate to tell you, like the Baptist folks pray. We That's don't right. pray like the Episcopalians pray. Oh, come on. We don't read words out of a book that That's somebody right. else wrote. Amen. No, we express ourselves to God from our hearts, and we let oh. God know how we feel about it. Yes. Amen. Yes. If we're troubled, we sound oh, troubled. Yeah. If oh. we're fearful, we sound fearful. Yeah. If we are desperate, we sound desperate. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Come but on. the Bible said the effectual fervent, fervent, yes. fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Oh, yes. What does fervent mean? That means you put emotion into it. You put your heart into it. You put your feelings into it. You don't just pray like you're speaking words somewhere in a closet that nobody's going to hear. You can't take prayer out of school. The, the principal let us have a prayer meeting. Let me tell you, there are schools all over America today that have before class prayer meetings. Don't tell me we're under persecution. Don't tell me they've taken prayer out of the schools. You are full of baloney. Right. There are schools all over the country that have uh, Christian student groups. Right. Where students or Christians can get together. Don't tell me the church is under persecution. The church today in America is still free to gather together and worship yes. God. Right. Right. You can believe what you want to believe. You yes. can preach right. what you want to preach. You can worship how you want to worship. Yes. You can yes. pray how you want to pray. Honey, don't oh. tell me the church is being persecuted. Yes. to make saints Amen. fearful. Yes, it is. Amen. And fear will never, ever, ever help you Come do on. the right thing or make the right decision. Fear Come never on. has, it never will. Whoa. It's funny, in the list of things that Peter talked about, that saints ought not to be. You know, I always, I always love to go to the things, Brother Freddie, where... You know, most preachers, you know, they preach and, and they'll they'll refer to this passage and they'll cover this, this, and then the last item, they just kind of let it fall off. They don't bother touching it. But you know what? That last item is probably the most important item on the list. Right. But listen, Peter said in verse number 15, 1 Peter 4, he said, But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer. Oh, Jesus. And most preachers, that's where they quit. But there's a fourth item. Listen. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. Come on. Yes. My God have mercy. The truth. If you look at 
the original Greek, you find that this phrase, busybody in other men's matters, literally would be translated, one who takes the supervisor's role concerning affairs pertaining to others right. and affairs that in no wise have anything to do with himself. It is a meddler in other man's Amen. affairs. I got news for you, sweetie. We got people today screaming and hollering they're being persecuted as saints of God when they're not being persecuted as saints of God. Right. They're a bunch of meddlers in other men's affairs oh. and they are being persecuted because they're Amen. acting the fool. Because they're yeah. doing things they ought right. not to be doing. Yes. Got news for you, honey. What gay lesbian people do in the privacy of their own home and in the privacy oh. of their own Supervising, you have no business overseeing other people's affairs right. and other people's business. Saints of God ought to be the most non intrusive people on yes. this planet. Yes, right. I don't care what you do, I don't care how you live, I don't care what kind of sin you engage in, I don't want to know about none of that. It's none of my business, Amen. it's none of my affair. Hello, now right. that's how a holiness person ought to live. Yes. If you're a busy puppy, you right. deserve the treatment you get. Right. If you're busy supervising everybody else's activities that don't have anything in the universe to do with you. Oh, oh, and preachers who try to make things. I love how preachers try to make things apply to the church and try right. to make things. Well, you know, these homosexuals, I'll tell you what, they're, they're going to bring our morality down in this country. They're going to destroy our country. Right. Really, are they doing that? No, yeah. but that's what they claim is going to happen. Honey, hadn't you learned yet that the church is in the habit of crying wolf? Yes. How many times have I heard preachers, how many times have I heard Republicans tell me that the Democrats are going to come door to door and take your yes. guns? Yes. We've had all kinds of Democrats in the White House, Hello. and guess what? Yes. Not once has one of them done that. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Amen. Oh, they keep telling us over and over again, brother. They keep sounding the horn over and over again. Oh, they're going to take away our guns. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. And there's a bunch of foolish ignoramuses Amen. in the church today Come on. who hear these people saying this over and over and over and over and over again, and never do they realize, hey, wait a minute. They keep crying wolf, but every time I go up there, there ain't no wolf to be found. Right. They keep saying that this one's going to do this, and that one's going to do this, and then that one's going to do this. And yet, every single time, it never happens. Mm -hmm. That's right. That ought to tell you something. If you had a brain in your head, you'd know that if they keep telling you something that ain't happening, then there's a good probability that they're misleading you. Come on. Uh -huh. That's yeah. right. Amen. There's a good probability that they're just trying to generate fear, that they're just trying to make you fearful. Because I'm going to tell you, if I can motivate you to do something stupid, the best way to get you to do something stupid is to make you afraid. Mm-hmm. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, the Word of God said, Do all things, all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without repute, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. That's what Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. Do all 
things without murmurings and disputing. Um, got news for you, saints. That includes getting a vaccination and wearing a mask. Amen. 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 Oh, but I'm afraid the vaccine isn't tested well enough. I'm afraid the vaccine might hurt me in the long run. Um, well, the problem with your statement is it begins with I'm afraid. Come on. Jesus said, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. He said, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. He said, nothing shall by any means harm you. Isn't that what he said? See, I'm not worried about doing what the government asked me to do. If they Amen. believe, honestly, it's going to help the population. I'm not worried about doing it because even if they meant harm, they cannot harm a child of God because I've right. got somebody bigger than government watching Amen. my family. Hallelujah. If Christians live what we're supposed to live and genuinely abide it by the principles and teachings of God's Word, the church would not be experiencing the massive loss of moral authority and general respect that it once enjoyed. And the more it pushes falsehoods regarding persecution and troubles, the more it creates for itself, listen to me, children, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yes. First Peter 2, 13 through 17 said, Submit yourselves to every ordinance, every ordinance, every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. If man says a queer comes into your bakery and you've got to bake a cake for him, then you are okay with God baking a cake. of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Oh, oh, we got people griping and complaining. Oh, yeah, yeah. Biden's trying to be a king. He's trying to be a potentate. Well, then you need to do what he says because the word of God said that you're to obey every ordinance. Amen. That's right. My Amen. Lord have mercy. That's even right. if it comes from a king. Amen. That's the truth. <laughs> Amen. And for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorant of foolish men. Yes. See, by obeying the law and abiding by these mandates and these ordinances, we're putting to silence ignorant men. But when you stand there and argue and fight and go to war over everything, honey, Come all on. you're doing is bringing down heat on yourself. Yeah, you're not right. being persecuted that's for right. being that's a Christian. Right. You're right. being that's persecuted right. for being an idiot. Amen. 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 That's it. Amen. He said, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness. Oh, isn't that funny how Christians, they, they want to they want to, I'm going to, I'm not going to do for these people, I'm not going to do for those people because I don't like the people, I don't like the, I don't like the way those people live and stuff. Uh -huh. So, you know, I, I, I'm going to do things, I'm not going to do things for them because I don't want to do it. And they're using their liberty in Christ as yeah, a cloak of yeah. maliciousness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But Peter said, but as the servants of God. We're supposed to act like the servants of God. We're supposed to do whatever God told us to do regardless. And God said Amen. to submit yourself to every ordinance. Amen. My Lord. He said, servants. Oh, excuse me. He said, honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. Yes. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. In other words, if you get lambasted for the stupid things you do, he said, there's no glory in that. He said, but if when ye do well and suffer for it, Ye take it patiently, that is acceptable to God. Yes. See, God, people acting the fool, then they wonder why 
why they fall under uh, all kinds of throwback and why wow. people, you know, come against them. In Matthew 22, 17 through 21, tell us therefore, what thinkest thou, they asked Jesus, is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Right. Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny, and he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are yeah. God's. If Christians lived what we're supposed to live, yeah. government and church would not be married. Amen. Yes. Amen. Separate. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm telling the truth today. First Timothy 2, 1 through 4, trying to hurry because I see him running. I'm running late today. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. Isn't it funny when there's a Republican in the White House, they preach we're supposed to pray for those in authority. When there's a Democrat in the White House, we're supposed to rise up in insurrection. We're supposed to take up arms and get him out of office. Isn't it funny, the hypocrisy in the church? Right. Amen. In the church. The truth said for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodliness and honesty. Yes. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Yes. In Proverbs 25, 21, If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. And the Lord shall reward thee if Christians live what we're supposed to live. Right. I can't make a cake for them queers. Isn't that funny? Jesus said, if your enemy be hungry, give him bread. Come I can't make a cake for them queers. <laughs> if your enemy be hungry, give him bread. I got news for you, honey. There, that's a whole lot bigger a deal, giving your enemy food, yeah. than baking a cake for Come those on, who yeah. don't have life, Come or on. whose life you don't happen to agree with. That's right. Matthew 5, 43 through 46. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And persecute you. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Oh my goodness. If you were being persecuted, then you ought to be praying for the people persecuting you. That's right. Bless him, Lord. Not taking up arms, not claiming we need to do away with the Constitution right. and establish a new government. Right. No, no, no. Honey, if Christians live what we're supposed to live. Amen. Right, amen. amen. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and oh, on the good, yes, Jesus. and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Mm -hmm. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have you? Right. Do not even the publicans the same? But you know what? The church today is full of people. The only people they can love are other people in the church. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. Right. Oh, honey, if you don't go to my congregation, if you're not part of my church, I can't love you. Oh, my God, have mercy if the church only lived what That's the church right. is That's supposed true. to live. Amen. Romans 13, 1 through 7, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Oh, I'm under persecution because I rose up and I was trying to convince Congress that they needed to throw out the election results and they needed to appoint Mr. Trump for another term. Hallelujah, Lord. No, you're not being persecuted, stupid. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
You're not being persecuted, not in the least. You're experiencing the just response to your idiotic actions. That's right. right. Amen. Let every man be subject unto the higher powers, because every power, there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Amen. I love people who say, oh, the devil won. Oh, I'm telling you what. A Democrat's in the White House and he don't belong there. The devil won. Honey, you don't know your Bible and you're a fool. Come on. Yes. If you knew your Bible, you'd understand whoever wins one because that's the one God wanted there right. for whatever right. His purpose and whatever His reason. Amen. Yeah. Right. Amen. I had to accept that when Mr. Demon was in the White House. <laughs> and I did accept yep. that he was there for right. God's purpose. Yeah. Right. I believe he was there to, to tear the mask off of America's false religion. Yeah. I believe he was there to pull the mask right. off of yeah. fundamentalists and evangelicals and yeah. to Reveal their yes. hypocrisy. Yes. I think Donald Trump was in office so that the church could be made naked and laid bare so that people could oh, see her yes. for the whore she is. Yes. So even though I'm sad that we had to go through everything we had to go through, I believe it was God. Yes. I believe yeah. God had a purpose in it. One yes. the purpose that the fundamentalists and evangelicals said it was, but God had a purpose in it. Yes. Continuing Romans 13, 1 through 7, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Yeah. Rulers don't terrorize people who do good. No. They terrorize people who do evil. That's right. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. Right. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore he must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also taxes, for they are God's ministers according, excuse me, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. The false cries of persecution by the church in America are going to lead to genuine persecution. Remember when you were a kid and cried? Mom, Dad sometimes would say, you want to cry? What was the next phrase? I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> Right. Oh, persecution is coming, saints. I got news for you. Persecution is coming. The Bible tells us it's coming. Yes. It's not avoidable. You can't do anything to prevent it. Right. The Word of God said it is a sign of the Lord's coming. It is oh, going to come. Yes. So we may as well put on our safety belts and prepare for the inevitable. But when the real thing shows up, so tired of the false cries yes. of persecution by the church in America that it's going to turn a deaf ear to the genuine cries of torture, imprisonment, oh, and death. You can only cry wolf so many times. That's right. And then people are going to stop believing you. Luke chapter 21, verse 7 through 19. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign shall there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Right. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. Isn't it funny? Did you hear what the Lord said? Be not terrified. God did one time advise us to be fearful. That's right. Be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass. Right. right. Amen. But the end is not by and by. 
Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and adversaries. Right. Excuse me. And kinsfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Right. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. Oh, Jesus. What do we got to be fearful of? if we believe the Word of God. Right. He's telling us all these horrible things are going to happen. All these terrible things are coming. They're all signs of His coming. He said, but not a hair of your head's going to perish. Right. Why are we running around terrified? Why do we have churches running around scared out of their minds? Why do we have preachers preaching fear into the hearts of God's people? In your patience, the Lord said, possess ye your souls. In yeah. John chapter 16, verse 2, I'm trying to hurry. I know I'm over time today. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Are you trying to tell me the church is being persecuted in America and Jesus said the time would come when killing you is going to look like they're doing a, the world a favor? Are there, are there saints being killed in the streets of America? Are there preachers being killed in America today? Do people look upon preachers and saints being killed as the, uh, the somebody doing the world a service? I haven't seen it. That's not in my paper. If the authorities or the law ask you to do something you do not wish to do for religious reasons, you are not obligated by the word of God to, quote unquote, stand for righteousness and refuse to do it. The word of God does not tell you to, quote unquote, stand for righteousness and refuse to do it. No, it instructs us oppositely. Unless you're being asked or told to do something that is specifically forbidden by God's word, you are obligated as a child of God to comply. Right, that's right. If a police officer comes up beside your car and says, pull over. Come on. You got to pull over. Come on. It's true. Somebody comes into your bakery and they ask you to bake a cake for their third marriage or their fifth marriage. Right. Got news for you, this preacher don't believe in divorce and remarriage. According to my Bible, that, that's something that God doesn't approve of. That's not the way God meant for this thing to work, and I told him through. Yeah. But you know what? I have no business overseeing their affairs. I have no business poking my nose into their business. I don't care what they're using that cake for. I don't care what names they're putting on it. If it's Joe and Joanne, or if it's Joe and John, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to bake the cake. God's word tells me that that is how I ought to conduct myself. Amen. My Lord have mercy. If they're not asking me to go to bed with a man and I don't believe in sleeping with a man, then you know what? Then whatever they're asking me ain't something that I have to worry about. That's right. Mm -hmm. These fools are running around. Oh, I can't do this because they're gay. Honey, they're not asking you to go on their honeymoon. That's right. They're not asking you to lay in their bed with That's them. Right. If they were, then I could see you refusing. Come but on. asking you to bake a cake for an affair they're having is hardly the same as asking you to engage in a menage a Amen, amen. Right. Now, if the law demand you engage in sexual behavior that you believe to be wrong, that you could refuse to do with the endorsement of God's Word. Yeah. But nowhere in the Word of God are we ever permitted to label certain people or groups of people in such a way as to allow us to refuse them service oh, or to Jesus. otherwise shut them out. Yeah. Ephesians 5, 11, and 12, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful work 
works of darkness. Works of darkness. You know what that means? That means you don't engage in the activity. Doesn't have a thing in the world to do with the people who might commit those activities. Come on. Yeah. That's right. You don't engage in the works. That's right. I can bake a cake for a cake couple. I'm not going to go to bed with them, but I'll bake a cake for them. Right. You follow what I'm telling you now. But rather reprove them, for it is a shame to even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. It is a shame to even... But we got people running around talk about other people. They talk about their business. They talk about what they do in private. Come and the on. Word of God said it's a shame to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Right. But we've got Christians who justify themselves in doing this very thing. Mm -hmm. True. Amen. Acts 5, 27 through 20. Almost done. i got a lot of scripture. I preach the Word of God. I don't preach my opinion. I preach the Word Amen. of God. Amen. Acts 5, 27 through 29. And when they had brought them, they sent them before the council and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in his name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. I love how Christians yes. go to this passage. Oh, bless God, I don't care if the law says I got to do for people that I don't agree with and I don't like. I ain't going to do it, but God, I'll tell you what the Bible said. I better go obey God than to obey man. Only problem, idiot, is God never told you not to do that. That's right. He told you the exact point. That. He said, obey every ordinance. Submit yourself to every ordinance. If you're told you got to do things a certain way, do it that way. Yes. My God. Oh, we love to twist scripture and set aside our carnal way of doing things and looking at things. Amen. Second Timothy 3, 12, the word of God said, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So why in the world are you run around screaming about it? Why are you yelling about it? Why are you right. claiming there's a wolf amongst yeah. the right. sheep? Why? Yeah. Honey, if you're living right, you're going to experience persecution. I got news for right. you. That's how it works. Yeah. Lastly today, 1 Peter 3, 12 through 17, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid. My yes. God have mercy. Once again I read the phrase. Be not afraid yes. of their terror. Neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord your God and the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Right. For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than Amen. for evil-doing. Mm -hmm. The same God who healed and delivered from demons in the first century, same God who opened prison doors right. and caused the stocks to fall from yes, come on. Paul and Silas' wrists and ankles. Glory. The same God who gave his people favor with yes, powers and kings and authorities in the early church Glory. is the same God the we same. serve today. Yes, yes, yes. There is no reason to fear persecution. There is no reason to fear that which is coming. And it is coming. You can't stop it. There's not a thing in the world. But there is no reason to fear. Amen. The same God who brought some Paul 
what persecution is certain, so is the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Persecution's going to come, but so is the move of God. Yes, amen. We've no reason to fear as we serve the same God who yes. delivered Paul and Silas yes, we do. from the deepest dungeon. We serve the same God who led Peter by an angel out of prison into the hall where the saints were praying for his release. Yes, amen. Glory. Say, well, brother, that was the first Glory. century. I'm afraid God's changed yeah. since then. Well, I'll tell you what, when Martin Luther was Whoa. fearful for his life because the Catholic Church was out to kill him uh -huh. after he posted his 99 thesis, guess what? His local authority, the ruler in his local district, Whoa. God gave him divine favor with that man, and that man provided protection for Martin Luther until that man died a natural death. Oh, Martin Luther never died on any fire that was set by Catholic priests. Right. Martin Luther never died at the stake. He was never hung. He was never beheaded. He was never quartered. Oh, no, 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 honey. You know why? Because God gave him divine favor right. with the man right. who was the head of government in his district. Yes. God news for you. The same God who took care of Martin Luther can take care of you and I. Amen. The same God who gave him favor can give you and I favor. Amen. But the only way God can give us favor is if we're acting right and doing it. Come on. Yes. If we're living this thing the way we're supposed to be living it. God doesn't give favor oh, to morons oh, and idiots. If I may say so. Oh. I know I'm getting mean today. I'm closing. I want to remind you today. Every time the enemy turns up the heat on the people of God, those people of God who walk by faith and seek His help experience a mighty manifestation of the power of God. Bless the Lord. Bless Hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. Did you hear me? Every time the devil turns up the heat, God sends fire. Yes, he does. <laughs> Every time the enemy tries to turn the heat up, God matches them with fire from heaven. Yes. And the power of God falls and the manifestation of the Holy Ghost comes. We don't have anything to fear. That's right. The more things get bad, the more God gets good. sheep among wolves. But we ought not to be crying wolf when there is no wolf. We ought not to be claiming we're going through things and experiencing things that we're not. Because, honey, the day's coming when the real thing's going to come. You don't need to be afraid today. You don't need to be afraid then. God's power matches every obstacle. Yes. When trouble comes, here comes the Holy Ghost. Bless the Lord. When trouble comes, here comes the power of God. Amen. Would you stand with me this afternoon? The boy who cried wolf. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Master, today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, help us not to run around motivated by fear. Help us, Lord not to falsely see trouble when there is no trouble. Help us, Lord, not to be fearful and to run about constantly claiming we're experiencing things that we're really not experiencing. The real thing's coming. 
ages to come and knowing we might be prepared in our hearts and in our minds. Lord, that we might not be fearful, but that we might in advance remind ourselves that when the devil comes against his people, when the enemy comes against us like a flood, God will raise up a standard against him. Hallelujah!
places this ministry in the future. Wherever, if we stay here, fine. If we move, fine. But I'm going to tell you, wherever God puts this ministry, there is tremendous potential for a mighty move of God. There really is tremendous potential. We appreciate your joining us this afternoon at 3 o'clock. I hope you'll come be with us next Sunday at 3 o'clock Central Standard Time for worship and the word. God bless you in Jesus' name is our prayer. Amen. Amen.